What's up, YouTube? Josh Palal, the RuneScape Felon, back again with the Monday upload. And I think I've been saying this a lot lately, but this video is going to be a little bit different than usual this week. So as many of you know, I was on the official podcast again. Uh, it aired a few days ago this past Thursday, I guess it was Thursday evening. Things have been going amazing. Thank you to all the people who came to check out my channel and hang out my Twitch stream and stuff that came from the official podcast. Uh, I'm really excited to expand the family. It has been beautiful. I love you guys. We met a lot of uh, just a ton of new people that have come in. And uh, I feel like I relate to them, you know, and I try to always interact with my Twitch chat a lot. And we've got some awesome guys. So welcome to all the new people. And uh, if you just subscribed from there, thank you for taking the time to click on my link or type my name in or whatever you did. But um, in the comments of the video, um, I saw a message from somebody that I actually grew up with. Or I mean, grew up with. I knew her when I was younger. We weren't exactly friends. Uh, she was romantically involved briefly with the first drummer of my band, uh, the drummer of my very first band. And... Um, I mean, we weren't particularly close. We didn't particularly get along or anything, but you know, I didn't have any qualms with her. And um, she had a negative viewpoint of me. And even when I was locked up, I considered, you know, addressing my hometown. I'm sure this isn't exactly gonna be a view bomb video or anything, but it could be important for even one person that makes it worth it because uh, we ended up having what we will call a civil debate over some details of my case that were confusing. And I was wondering if people in my hometown actually think this about me or they think that certain things are true. For example, she said that I had stuff in my home which I guess is distorted from the anarchist cookbook that I had um, when, as a matter of public record, even though it seems like the FBI has actually removed some things about my case from the public record, some of their motions, not sure why. Um, it actually says point blank that they found no weapons of any sort in my home, no drawings, none of the stuff the ex-girlfriend said that I had, none of that was found in my home at all. But she was under the impression that I had stuff. And so, um, you know, I thought about a long time, for a long time about addressing my hometown. And I highly doubt that uh, anybody from my hometown or anybody that I grew up wa with watches my videos or even probably knows that I have a YouTube. Um, but I would like to apologize. And I discussed it with this girl and I don't necessarily, I don't know how to put it. It's like, I never intended for anyone in Oxford, Mississippi, in my hometown to actually know what I said. I didn't mean for it to cause any ruckus. I didn't mean for the school to have a lockdown and stuff like that. Even though the date that I said was a Saturday, six months away, when the threats were received, they went on lockdown. Um, I've been told by teachers that worked there that once they found out who made the threat, they were a little aggravated with the school for taking it seriously because they were like, come on, you know that kid's a smart ass and he pops off at the mouth and he you know, says crazy stuff when he gets upset and he doesn't mean it or he's you know, just trolling and being sarcastic. Um, but nonetheless, people's lives were affected by this. No matter how minor it was, I didn't mean to cause anybody any discomfort, you know. I hope that nobody out there ever actually believed that their school was in any danger whatsoever. Um, to the point, at the point that I got arrested, I don't think anybody had attacked any schools that they didn't attend. And I didn't even attend Oxford High School anymore. I had dropped out and got my GED prior to this. But the fact of the matter is that some people could have been affected by it. Some people might believe that I did it. I'm sure that I was, I was a bad guy before I got locked up. Was I incredibly violent, maniac? No, but I, I mean, I was a stereotypical Kyle. I picked a lot of fights. I drank a lot of Monster, literally. I literally punched a hole in the drywall at my mom's house one time. Um, I was, you know, quite the womanizer. I ran through women a lot. Uh, I talked a lot of smack. I talked a lot of shit and started fights that were really pointless. I had a big ego. And, you know, it just doesn't surprise me, I guess, if some people out there never really understood the whole story and they just assumed that I was serious. So, really, I would like to apologize to my hometown of Oxford, Mississippi, if anybody from Oxford watches this. If anybody that I grew up with and had problems with when I was younger watches this, I can think of specific names of people that I got in fights with and stuff like that that were entirely my fault with very good guys with good moral centers that I actually, as I grew up and matured, I saw that they were in the right, they were mature, they were better than me, they were the bigger man, and I beat them up because I had an ego problem, you know? And... I just hope that those guys know, and I hope that the entire town knows, that I am sorry if I ever cause anybody discomfort. I'm sorry for the discomfort that I caused before I got arrested. Um, I've come a long way in life. Um, I had a spiritual awakening in prison after over a decade of atheism, atheist Buddhism, um, non-theist Buddhism is what I actually called it. And, you know, I'm married, which I never thought I would be, and I have a baby, which I never thought I would have, and I'm about to turn 28 in less than a month, and I never thought I would see that birthday, especially with the lifestyle I was living. And... I just, I just hope that nobody holds anything against me for what I did when I was 19. We all make mistakes. I made a huge mistake. And I apologize if anybody out there ever felt like they were under threat. Um, I'm not sure if this girl told the truth or not, but she told me that somebody moved away from the town when they heard that I was getting released. That seems a bit dramatic to me considering that I didn't threaten anybody in specific, you know. But 
that implies to me that there could be some type of mental damage or psychiatric trauma that I may have caused somebody for believing that I was serious. And if they didn't follow the story and they didn't watch the new, uh, you know, they didn't like watch my videos or see my explanation or anything, it's very possible that people who knew me could assume that I was going to snap out. And I, I mean, I just have to acknowledge that as an honest man, that I was not, I was not the type of person where you had to take this lightly, I guess I would say, you know what I mean? Um, that's my fault. I started drinking and drugging and got addicted to alcohol at the age of 14 for the first time. I went through withdrawals for the first time ever at the age of 14. Um, I was a ne'er-do-well. I was an absolute like ragamuffin, just a, a piece of garbage. And I just hope that everybody in my hometown knows that I didn't mean what I said that day. I never meant for anyone in Oxford to hear about it. The reason that I said the name of the school was because it was the school that I had attended. It's as simple as that. There was no, you know, oh, well, why didn't you say a fake school? Why'd you say your real name? Because I was just drunk and messing with this guy, you know? And it was a prank. And people will tell me, and this girl even told me at first, we had a debate and like an open-minded person, she changed her mind. A, a truly wise person can have a debate with somebody and admit that they were wrong and change their mind. I try to do that very often if other people are right. Um, but she mentioned that it wasn't a prank. And let me define, guys. I used to say it was a joke, okay? I don't call it a joke anymore. It wasn't a joke. A joke is a bad term for it because a joke implies that there's something funny about it. I wasn't trying to be funny. A prank is doing something ridiculous that you would not normally do to get a reaction out of somebody very similar. To, I mean, it's basically trolling, you know, um, or Kappa or whatever you want to call it in 2020. And that's what I was doing. I had nothing in my home. Um, I had multiple psychiatric evaluations that I've talked about and quoted. There's videos of me quoting the psychiatric evaluation on this channel where I blatantly read to the public uh, private mental health issues and scripts that were given to me, you know. Um, I'm sorry, Oxford. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, y'all. I never, I never meant for anybody to find out what I said. I didn't know I was going to get arrested. I didn't know this was going to become a big deal. I didn't know that I would suddenly become a scapegoat for the uh, increase in violence in America. I had no idea about any of that. But at the end of the day... I deserved to be punished. That's another misconception about my case. People think that I'm saying, oh, I did nothing wrong, I did nothing wrong. I did something wrong. Intervention was warranted. Legal action was warranted, okay? You can't just say things like that and expect to get away with it. I'm sorry, I'm a huge, huge defender of the First Amendment, of course, but I understand where the line must be drawn and I crossed the line on that day. The entire point of my entire channel and my story and why I go on podcasts and stuff like that is not about me. It's about the government and what they do and what they will do to save face and how corrupt the over prosecution system is. They're so zealous with their prosecutions. It's not about me. People think that I'm just out here for clout or whatever. I've heard people saying that. It's not about that. The story is so much bigger than me. I'm just an example of it. You know, I'm just like a fingertip on this huge body of people that have been done wrong by the FBI. So if, if people listen to their narrative or they, you know, the only publicly available motions are by the government. They didn't put our motions where we defended and defeated the things that they said and accused me of. They didn't publish any of those motions. They only showed theirs where we successfully argued against points and our motions that the judges accepted and said, this is pretty concrete evidence. They didn't put any of that on the Internet. It's not in the case law files. Only the government's motions are. They, they build a narrative, you know. And so Oxford, I was innocent of what they said I was going to do. And I don't mean to belittle anybody's suffering when I say that. Like, I, I, I truly, if somebody really was affected in the way that she said, please understand, I still troll. I still talk a lot of shit. I still love sarcasm. Um, when I get trolls, I don't ban them from my channel. I just had a massive troll ban on, uh, battle with somebody the other day, and he ended up deleting all of his comments. Okay, that I would rather face things head on and have a discussion or even an argument at times. I'm still a trolly guy. At my core, I'm about peace love, positivity, moving forward, using tragedies and obstacles in your life to learn and grow and become a better person, okay? I'm not the man that I was when I was in high school, guys, and I don't blame you for disliking that guy, but if you have any qualms or any issues inside of you with the person that I was, I humbly ask your forgiveness for my level 99 Kyle ship that was going on, and I would like to say I'm in a whole different point in life. You have nothing to be worried about. It was all a prank gone terribly wrong, and I was punished duly. I, I paid my debt to society, as they say. Personally, I think I paid a little bit extra uh, from what was deserved. But at the end of the day, guys, I just want everybody to know that's not who I am. I'm not the person they made me out to be, and I did not mean to scare anyone. I didn't mean to give anybody any trauma. I didn't mean to make anybody scared to go to school. It was entirely, entirely 
taken out. Just it, the, the roof was blown off of it. And I'm not even going to edit this video or anything, guys. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even put ads on this or none of that dumb stuff. This, this is not, this is me sincerely saying, I'm sorry for the person that I was. To the people that I fought, like I literally am thinking of three people that I had fights with that I won that are awesome guys that just like, I was just, I had a huge ego and I was just, I, I was just, I was hurting and I was looking and searching for something that I could not find. And one way or the other, I was probably going to end up in prison for the way that I was living. There's no doubt about that. I was a terrible drug addict. I was, I was a bad guy and I don't blame Oxford at all for remembering that guy, but I am not him. And I want everybody to know that. And I want everybody to know that you have nothing to be afraid of. And if I ever caused you any trouble at all, I'm sorry. I, I didn't want the police to get called because they, they had to put extra police at the football game the day that I made the threats. I didn't mean to take away resources from our police station. I didn't mean to, you know, have the entire police department in the house on October 8th, 2012 and, and blocking off streets and interfering with other people's lives or trying to go to work and things like that. This was all... This was never meant to cross that line. This was never, ever meant to go beyond, I had this argument with this guy. Did I deserve it? Yes, of course I deserve for them to come investigate. I'm not denying that whatsoever. I'm sad that I diverted resources onto myself that could have been used catching better criminals, but in the end, I did become a scapegoat. So Oxford, I'm not the guy that I once was. I'm not the guy that the FBI makes me out to be. And if I can offer you any closure at all, Feel free to leave a comment down below, especially, please guys, I would be so honored if somebody that knew me when I was younger would post a comment and be like, look, I've been watching your videos. I've been lurking. I'm not going to lie about it. It's all good. You know, there are people that said they would hate me for the rest of their lives whenever I was 17, 18 years old. You know, I'm 27 now, man. I'm about to be 28 and, and I'm just not that guy. And I apologize for who I was and I apologize for anything that you went through. And I apologize for the fact that this got blown so far out of proportion to the point that apparently people felt scared. I just can't stress enough, you guys. I, I never meant to harm anybody, not in any kind of a deep and lasting way. I had these egotistical fights where I felt like I had to put myself above somebody else that was youthful arrogance and nothing more. I'm not a monster. I'm not a terrible guy. I'm all about peace and love and positivity at my core. I, I promise you that, man, on my daughter. Like, I just... I just wish the whole world would just get along, compromise, seek the middle ground with those who oppose you. That's why I don't ban trolls. That's why I don't immediately hide them from my channel. You know, I would rather troll them back, argue a little bit, and possibly change their mind. Some of my best friends came into my Twitch chat, my best internet friends came into my Twitch chat talking trash about my case. I argued with them instead of banning them like a lot of streamers do. And they became allies and friends. Seek the middle ground with your opponents, guys. This is what I'm about, all right? So this is my reaching out towards the opposite side here because I understand now that some people in my hometown still take this seriously or they could be taking it seriously and it could still be affecting their lives. And I apologize for that. And this video is so much longer than I meant to make it. Um, but I love you guys, man. I love you, Oxford. I don't live there anymore in case anybody wants to know. I'm far away. I'm still in Mississippi, but I'm far away. I only go there every now and then to see my mom and let my mom see my daughter and stuff like that. Um, there's nothing left for me in that town. I don't have anything against it. There's just nothing but, you know, all my old friends pretty much are either in prison, they're still strung out on drugs, they overdosed, you know, there, there's nothing for me there. I have a whole new life. I've hatched out of my cocoon with my wife and my daughter, and that's my main focus right now. So to Oxford, Mississippi, I, I truly am sincerely sorry if anything that happened with my case scared you, affected you in any way, um, changed the way that you live your life whatsoever. Just please, please know it wasn't meant to happen. I did not mean for this to happen. I didn't mean for the attention to grow so large. And now the case is about shining what the FBI does. And if you have any doubts about this, guys, I got many videos like why did my ex-girlfriend testify against me or um, actual passages from my psych exam. You can investigate this case yourself. And if you see my side of it with an open mind and you read what they said and you choose their side, that is your right <laughs> as a human being to make up your mind. I don't blame anybody for that, guys, but I do apologize if I ever caused anyone any harm at all, Oxford, Mississippi. I was a dick when I was a teenager. And I see that now. I look back and think about how just aggressive I was and how unnecessary it was. And just like, I was hurting in a way that I just can't really describe to you guys. I was lacking what I have now. And I never thought I would have it. And I was a whole different person. The only thing that fueled me was drugs. I was chasing this dragon and I was hurting and I felt alone and I didn't have a good relationship with my parents and a good home life, you know, and I'm tight as hell with my family now and everything was my fault. 
all of the Kyle-isms, all of the fights, all of the drinking and drugging, it was my fault. And I apologize for the person I was. And I would just like to emphasize that I'm an entirely different man now. And other than the fact that I still look 16, you wouldn't recognize me as far as my daily life goes. I've been sober for almost two years. This upcoming January will be two years of sobriety. Something I never thought I would see. My life is in a beautiful place that I never thought would happen. And at the core of it is where it all started. My hometown, Oxford, Mississippi. And I love you guys, man. And I'm sorry. And I love even the guys that I got in fights with, that I talk trash with. All of you, I was in the wrong. 100% of the time. I'm a grown man now and I can look back and go, that was stupid. That guy was nice. He was kind. You started that. That was your fault, Josh. So I love you guys, man. I'm sorry that I rambled so long. It was very important to me after we discussed this. At first, I was like, I mean, if somebody had a problem with it, they should have read about my case. But I realized I wasn't being open-minded. And the only thing that could come from this video is positivity and no negativity towards people in their lives. So I decided it was a good idea to do it. Um, I'm updating Patreon and stuff right now. All right. You guys already know I'll be on Twitch all week. It just doesn't feel appropriate to super shout it out. But the links are down below. All right. Join the Discord and all that. Oxford. I'm sorry. I did not mean to interfere in your life in any way. I never thought anyone would hear it other than these people in the video game. It was all taken out of context, and I'm sorry if it affected you. All right? I love you guys. I'll be back next Monday with the Monday upload. Be on Twitch all week. I love y'all. Stay happy. Stay free. Most importantly, stay safe. See you next week.